Yeah, so one thing that I have to do today is uh, one of my clients just had a uh, surgery, um, and so I want to try to send him out a, a fruit basket or something like that. I don't really know what he's allergic to. That's what kind of concerns me. I don't know if he has any allergies, but um, I'm going to try to see if I can send out a, a fruit basket or something to his house uh, in the next day or so, um, you know, just to just to kind of cheer him up i mean you know it's good it's good to get stuff like that when when you're going through like major surgeries or any anything like that you know you want to just do stuff to cheer people up i think it's a good idea so i gotta decide where i'm gonna get the basket from and um you know and, and just go from there i mean it shouldn't require that much thought but this is one reason why i gotta hire a receptionist to do this type of stuff for me so i can just hey send them a Fruit basket, are you someone who brings your lunch to the office? Me personally, I usually bring my lunch. I mean, I'm just kind of that type of person. Um, I obviously am from a blue collar background, so I'm someone who just is accustomed to brown bagging it. Now that that new bubble gum machine is coming in, I'm gonna go outside and spray paint that real quick. So I can't wait to bring the girls back over and let them check it out. And Tell me what they think. Here is the uh, actual stand. Uh, is it focusing or not? Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, so that's the stand. And uh, I have not. The next step is I need to find a legal intern. Um, so I'm going to start working on that on uh, Monday afternoon as far as putting together um, the, the description of exactly what I'm looking for and I'm also going to put together a description of the type of uh, paralegal that I'm looking for as well or receptionist so that's it for um, that particular portion of what's going on in here yeah there you go good stuff Put just some of that on a roast beef pinwheel, and you're in heaven, my friend. All right, here we are again. It's the Big Rig Bull, Texas Truck Accident Lawyer, Richard Alexander, here on another beautiful Friday with you as we start episode 26, which you'll be viewing tomorrow on Saturday. But hey, we're going to take a, a different little uh, switch from the norm. Usually we talk about interstate trucking, trucking from state to state, federal motor carrier safety regulations. And so today we're going to start talking about my state. We're going to start talking about Texas. OK, and here in Texas, we do things a little differently. But for the most part, like many other states, Texas has adopted the federal motor carrier safety regulations or the federal laws for the most part are state laws for uh, intrastate trucking. That means within this, within this actual state um, commerce. So let's get started. This is going to be very brief. Not that much to put up here. And I, like I said, I apologize for how it looks because, the, uh, because I need to go buy some more markers tomorrow and it's kind of fading out. So I just try to do the best I can with what I have. Um, for the most part, Texas has adopted Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations, right? And so the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulation that generally covers the hours of service rule, which is what we're covering today, is statute uh, 395, or section 395, I'm sorry. And so Texas has adopted that. And so basically any vehicle or combination of vehicles with an actual gross, uh, a gross uh, weight or a gross weight rating that is in excess of 26,000 is going to be considered a commercial motor vehicle, right? Okay, but there are a few exceptions, okay? And those exceptions are the exceptions that we're gonna to cover today for the most part. Okay, one of the exceptions is public utility vehicles, okay? So if a public utility vehicle is operating intra or interstate, meaning that it's driving from state to state or within the state, it's going to be an exception from this commercial motor vehicle 
uh, rule that we have for the state of Texas, right? And that public utility vehicle is going to be defined under the Public Utility Regulatory Act, the Gas Utility Regulatory Act, the Texas Water Code, and 395.2 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations, right? The most important, well, I'm not going to say the most important, but one of the key terms under all this is that this public utility vehicle is going to be responsible for maintaining essential services to the public to protect health and safety. So this is an exception. Public utility vehicles are an exception to regulations of, of the hours of service for commercial motor vehicles, meaning they don't have to abide by the rules that the rest of us do or the rest of truck drivers do. The other exception, and I'm going to go into greater detail with this on another vlog, but I thought it was very important to bring up, is the uh, air mile radius rule. Okay, the air mile radius rule is basically, it, does, it does not apply to drivers transporting agricultural commodities or distribution point for, for the farm supplies within a 150 mile radius from the source of the commodities or distribution point for the farm supplies when such transportation occurs during the planting and harvesting, harvesting season. That's a lot, okay? Pretty much to boil that down. What this is telling us is that if there are trucks that are being used for agricultural purposes and they're within a 150 mile radius of either the source of the commodities, meaning, you know, apple trees, that's what we're going to use, use apple trees. If a truck is transporting apples from the source of that orchard or if they're either acquiring, acquiring farm supplies from uh, within 150 miles of this area, then during the planting and harvesting se season, this is not going to apply. The hours of service are not going to apply to this type of agricultural commodity truck or commercial vehicle truck. Okay, and just for clarification, it says occurs during planting, occurs during planting and harvesting season. Harvesting and planting season is, is basically year round, it's January first to thirty to December thirty first. So we have public utility vehicles that are exceptions. And we have trucks that are being basically used for agricultural commodities, okay? 150 mile uh, radius rule. And I'm going to go into further deta detail with that as far as the, as far as the exceptions to that uh, probably sometime next week. The only other thing that I wanted to briefly talk about was the hours of service, the actual hours of service for truck, drop, for truck drivers in Texas, in interstate commerce. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is this. I want to talk about the hours of service, okay? You remember that we said, hey, uh, a truck driver that is transporting goods interstate commerce, state to state, can only drive for 11 hours. In Texas, it's 12 hours inside of the state. You remember that on the on-duty time for an interstate commerce commercial motor vehicle driver is 14 hours. In Texas, it's 15 hours. The off-duty time is eight hours consecutively in the state of Texas, and the weekly limits are 70 hours over seven days, and it requires a 34-hour restart. Okay, so that wraps up today um, as far as the Texas hours of service uh, regulations, and I hope to see you again. Hope you tune in. If you can, subscribe by pressing that red YouTube button, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another vlog.